We all know that when we pedal our bikes, it turns the rear wheel, but when we stop pedaling, the rear wheel can carry on turning. Is it some kind of magic or witchcraft? Well, no, it's because we have a free hub, and this is an important component on modern bikes. So let's take a look inside, see what it is and how it works. The free hub is a component of the rear hub. This is the free hub here and this is the main hub and it actually serves two main purposes. It contains the cluster of gears, the cassette, which our chain runs across and it also contains a ratcheting mechanism which is designed to transfer the force of our pedaling to the wheel and also enable the wheel to carry on turning whilst the free hub remains still. The concept of a free hub was invented way back in 1938 by a company called Bayless Wiley. However, the free hub which we're familiar with today was invented by Shimano more recently in 1978. So you've heard of a free wheel and a free hub, but what's the difference between them? Well, a free wheel was invented a long time before a free hub like this, and it actually contains both the cassette, cluster of gears, and the ratcheting mechanism in one single component. This unit was then threaded onto the rear hub of the bike and tightened by the force of the rider's pedaling action, which at times could mean it was incredibly difficult to remove. Although, I suppose it's better than the thread being the opposite way around and the rider's pedaling force loosening it off. Also, a free wheel was particularly difficult to clean and service because the ratcheting mechanism was encased inside that cluster of gears, making it quite hard to get access to and replace. Also, it meant as your cassette or gears wore out, you'd have to replace the whole thing and was not really great value for money. The free hub was the solution to the free wheel's flaws. It separated the cassette and the ratcheting mechanism, meaning they could be replaced and serviced independently. Another advantage of the free hub is that the cassette actually fits onto these splines here, meaning it's not affected by the force of the rider's pedaling action. And finally, one of the big advantages is the bearings themselves can be placed much wider on the hub to spread the load of the rider evenly across the axle. Free hubs are actually fairly simple to remove, although it will vary depending on the manufacturer of your wheels. And let's face it, it'd be no fun if they're all the same. First off though, you're going to need to remove the cassette off of your wheels, although we're not going to need to do that today as we've got a hub separate from the wheel ready to use. Next step of the process is going to be to remove these axle end caps. Luckily enough, it's super simple on this hub we've got here today, which we can just pull them off. But some hubs will require Allen keys to unwind these. So as I said, this one here just removes like so. With the axle end caps removed, we can quite simply pull the free hub away from the hub body, taking care not to drop any of the small components inside to make sure we don't lose them. It can be a good idea to do this over a cloth to make sure these little parts don't fall and bounce onto the floor. We'll be searching around looking for them later. It's a pretty simple process, but it's worth checking the specifics for your wheels before you start taking everything apart. So what actually is a ratcheting mechanism? Well, it's this piece here on the free hub, which allows the hub body to turn in one direction and not the other. What does this mean in relationship to our bikes? Well, it means that the hub can continue on turning whilst this piece is stationary whilst we're not pedaling. Yet when we start to pedal, the ratchet mechanism engages into the hub and drives our motion forwards with the hub to move us along the road. There are a few variations to the ratcheting mechanism, depending on the manufacturer of your wheels, but ultimately, these all work in a very similar process. The examples I've got here today use this toothed pull design, and these will engage into opposing teeth machined into the hub. The pulls here are actually spring-loaded, and this is to ensure that when we're trying to pedal, they engage correctly into the hub, and also when we're not pedaling, the spring can push down and disengage these from the hub to allow us to freewheel. This example here has got four teeth, although some different designs will use less or more depending on the application and what they're intended for. The teeth that are machined into the hub body here, as you can see, can vary depending on applications. Sometimes they can be machined to a very fine pitch teeth, and that will mean we've got a very fast engaging um, free hub action, but these are a little bit more susceptible to wear. You can also get more coarse teeth, and this will mean we've got a slower engaging free hub and it's far more robust. Manufacturers will pick between this depending on what they want their hubs for. Now we understand how the free hub works and how you can remove it, let's take a look at the different free hub bodies which fit the different types of cassettes that are available. Shimano and SRAM cassettes use a splined design and they've actually got one spline that is a different size to the rest of them to act as a located spline, which means you can only put the cassette on in one certain way. It also uses a lock ring that attaches onto the ends to hold it all in place. Campagnolo free hubs use a similar design to Shimano, but the shape of the splines are actually quite different. And this uses an even smaller lock ring to attach onto the end 
and is located using the splines that match up to the cassette. The final design we'll look at today is actually SRAM's XD drive, and this uses a similar spline design to Shimano, but as you can see here, it's only this far piece at the end of the body, and it uses an integrated lock ring, which threads onto this piece in the middle, meaning that the cassettes can actually use a 10 tooth sprocket as opposed to the smallest, which is available on Shimano being an 11 tooth. Reassembly on this hub is again a fairly simple process. And if we've got the hub body off here, now's the time when we want to reassemble any of these delicate little pulls in case we've removed those. And it's then the idle time to take some brake cleaner or similar to clean up all of the components, remove any grease and grime, and then fit some nice clean fresh grease so we've got a nice long service hub. Today I'm going to use this general purpose bike grease, but you can use thicker or thinner greases depending on what you want to choose. But don't be fooled into thinking the thicker the grease the better because if you use an incredibly thick grease, it can mean these little pulls can stick down, meaning they're going to remain disengaged, and you'll end up sat there pedaling and going nowhere fast. Our first step of reassembly is to take a hub and our main part of the axle and quite simply guide it through. So we've got to just line it up carefully like this, and then guide that through, all the way through push it through here. Once this is in place, we can then take our free hub body, take that across here and use this to help guide this on too. So we can guide that into there carefully. Might take a little bit of persuasion. Get that all the way down to here. Once you've got the free hub body at this point here, we're going to have to rotate the free hub to help get these pulls to disengage and allow it to all slide in place. And if you just turn it slowly, you should push those in you can center the axle ready for the next step, which is attaching the end caps. The final part of the process is to refit our end caps, which we removed earlier. And if yours are threaded ones, that's when you're gonna to need to take your Allen keys and guide those back on. These will just push into place like so. There you go, and those are back on. If yours are threaded, quite often, the manufacturer will recommend a torque setting for these. So it's worth checking that out to make sure you torque them up correctly. Once you've got everything correctly back together, you just need to give it a quick check over to make sure it all operates correctly. And you can do that by quite simply turning the hub body away from the axle separate, and then double checking that the free hub spins freely and also engages. So we can see here if I turn that, it's turning the whole hub round. So that's good and that works correctly. So there you have it, everything you could possibly need to know about free hubs, and more bike knowledge that you can share amongst your friends. If you have any questions about free hubs, why not get them in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Oh yeah, and while you're down there, give it a big thumbs up too. See you later.